Okay, I am Larry Liggett. I've been playing with thistles for probably 40 years. I started doing this when I was 12 years old and my dad put me in his boat, 823, with a big 4x24 Sears belt sander in the bilge, stripping varnish. That didn't turn out real well, but that's how I started doing this. And I've since been playing with boats for quite a while, uh, both wood and fiberglass in restoration or building. And today, what we're doing is putting rails on a wood thistle. And I'm going to go over the basic steps necessary for that. The first and easiest thing to do is buy rails from Doug Labor at Great Midwest Yacht Company. Tell him that you're using, you're doing rails on a wood boat. A wood boat is different from a glass boat because the wood hull has molded curves that just extend up where the rail is attaching. Back aft, you have tumble home where they're curving in. About midway at the shroud, they're about vertical, and as they go forward, they're angled out. The goal is to put the rails on so that they are horizontal across the boat, so it would make that's the fitting procedure that's harder on a wood boat. The glass boats are built with a uh, flat section or a vertical section molded in about one inch thick so that you don't have to do any of this fitting. So when you buy rails, you, uh, you have to be cognizant of the W dimension on your uh, measurement sheet. If you want to be a legal thistle, W is the width of the rails. That dimension is three and one quarter inches and it has zero uh, plus and you can be a half inch less than that. However, you want to be at three and a quarter for the full maximum width for comfort. Your ass will appreciate that. Because the glass boats, the hull thickness is about an eighth of an inch, the stock you would use for the in whale and out whale will be slightly larger in order to make up that three and a quarter overall dimension. The wood rails, the in whale is made up of three pieces. This one has oak, white oak on the inside, and then two pieces of Honduras mahogany. And this dimension is two and a quarter plus inches. Um, plus we use in this shop, meaning a 30 second. And I could figure out the 30 second. I think it's 9 30 seconds, but I hate that because it confuses me and I think about it. So we use two and a quarter plus. The out whales are 13 16 thick, and the hull is 5 plies of a 16, so it's 5 16 thick. All right, since your W, your our target width is 3 and a quarter inches, and you add these up, the in whale at 2 and a quarter plus, out whale is 13 16, the hull at 5 16. If you put that all together in a straight fashion, it's 3 and 3 eighths plus a little bit. Now that only happens actually at the shroud, and I'll explain why. The, uh, if we take a section of our assembly, the hull and the rail, a section being if you slice it here and look at the end of it, at the shroud where the hull is about vertical, I'll sketch this out, you have the hull comes up at 5 sixteenths, and we're going to put the in whale on, it's in three pieces, and we put the out whale on, and it's oriented, it has a bevel on the bottom side, it's like this. That dimension is three and the three eighths. And that's too fat. Um, but what happens is, when we do a section of the hull back aft, the hull now is not vertical. It's not square here. The hull aft is this way. So you fit the in whale on, and where it would have been, we have now cut away a piece of it. And the out whale, uh, we don't actually trim the out whale at all, but when we do the assembly of that whale, it's assembled so that it's mounted in this fashion. This is a little bit exaggerated. Maybe it's a lot exaggerated. But this is going to be cut off here and then re-squared here, eventually rounded. 
By the time we take this material off, this ends up being about three and a quarter. The same thing happens up forward where the hull is now at this angle and we fit the in whale on where the in whale was, was here, we've cut this away. So now this has reduced its size. You have to very, this is a little trickier in a sense because now you have to mount the out whale a little bit higher than the hull because it's angling the other way so that when that gets cut away you have this dimension. You've trimmed, you trim this out when you're done uh, and that now, because we've trimmed it all, is about three and a quarter as well. So the biggest problem area is where it's vertical because we've cut away the in whale uh, fore and aft to make it fit, but here we haven't. So what we'll end up doing is just trimming some of that to get this dimension down. We want to do it that way because from an engineering point of view, we've made these rails with the oak as the outboard and the inboard parts. And in beam engineering and structural beams, those are the two stronger, tougher pieces of material. We could just install these and then trim the oak, but then that's reducing the size of our strongest pieces. So we want to trim the inside so that we maintain the larger, stronger pieces as our in, part, in our component structure. All that weird talk. Uh, so, on to fitting. Okay, when you buy the rails from Doug, they come, the outwheel comes, and it's 13 16 thick. You have your top flat, which is squared to everything, and the bottom is a 10 degree bevel. That makes this an inch, and the outside is 7 8 of an inch. When this goes on the hull, back aft, we want, you want to place this so that the top ed inside edge is flush to the hull itself. And then, when this gets screwed on, you know, you'll screw it so that it's square to, or, you know, straight into the in whale. That gets tricky. This will eventually get trimmed off, flush, and then this will get trimmed off vertically. And then it'll end up getting rounded. So you end up with your bevel and all this. The difference in what we're going to do in this video is this boat, because it's a pristine boat that's virtually never been sailed. We were able to take the out whales off and the out whales are in perfect shape. A couple of minor scars here and there, but nothing that a little sanding won't take care of. So they've already been, they're white oak, they've already been fit to the boat, and because they've been sitting on the boat for 40, uh, the boat's 54 years old. And after 54 years old, the white oak has taken the shape, even though it's off, it's in the shape of the hull. We already have the holes drilled, so they're already fit and ready to go. It's the same dimension, 13 16 as a new out well, and, um, but it's already pre-fit, so we're just going to use the old ones. It saves money, too. So, that's the difference in the new and old. You can see walk this way with this piece here. You get up in the shroud area and this gets put on. You can see that it's relatively flat. Uh, as you go further forward and it's beveling. Let's see if we can get in here. This is low. So when this gets mounted, if it's a, a raw rail, if it's an untrimmed out rail like this, it has to be placed slightly up here, maybe an eighth of an inch, to accommodate the fact that it's beveling down. I have this, what this is, is uh, just a temporary support just to hold the rail approximately in place while we're working, because I'm doing this alone, no extra hands. Then we get into fitting. We already started this. We fit the transom. 
we started this fit, it's slightly, it needs to be beveled slightly more all the way in. To help know what we're cutting, we can put a reference. And I'm just going to look at this. This is already flat. And I want to take a little bit more off the top. Now, once I got about three feet up, it fits. So I'm just sort of tapering this cut. And you can see here, my flat is, my new angle has extended all the way down. I've actually never cut anything right off that bottom edge. And you can see how it tapers out. There's a little bit of technique there. Now, an alternative, alternative way to do this for those faint of heart, I kind of like to just do it all by eye. But you can use something like a, uh, a bevel square, a slide, sliding bevel. stick, which is basically across the boat, straight, you can lay this on here and make this bevel match what the hull is at a given point. And then take your rail at that same point and put it on here and see how well that matches. Well, that's pretty close. So that's another way you can check that. I don't like them. You just do it by eye. So once we uh, start the fitting process, I like to plant, plant these pieces and start testing. Now, a couple of tips about clamping. To help hold, you only have a certain number of hands. So I use my hip to hold the outwell in place. When you put a clamp on, this is unforgiving. It's a flat surface that does not move. So when you put it on, you want to hold it and rock it flat. And then the pad is what is mobile. Make sure this is flat. If it's angled uh, in any axis and you clamp it and it's a little tight, it'll crush the fibers. It'll dig in and crush it. I'm going to start all the way back aft. Make this flush, which means that the screw hole that's here already will match. Now I'm holding the clamp with this hand flat, and then I will get this adjusted and just snug it up. Don't make it too tight. Now, easier for me, holding it in this direction because I'm right-handed. Pull this up, flush these out, make this flat, get it close. Everything moves. Now eventually when we do this, we'll clamp this so that we're specifically between the screw holes, which on this are pre-drilled because we're using the old one. If you're using the new one, a new piece of wood, you actually have to do a layout and figure out where the screws are going to go. That's a whole other problem. If you want to figure out where your grating is, where your spinnaker box goes, you don't have a screw, you actually want a screw just forward and just after the spinnaker block. You gotta locate your shroud, do the same thing, and then space accordingly. Now the old way rails were done, uh, you actually had the screws are what are they? Three and a half? They're about uh, I guess they vary some. They're nominally uh four inch on center. 
that gives you a ton of screws in the Atwell. But in addition to that, they had a whole set of screws on the in-well. So they had screwed the in-well in between all of these holes, just the hull attached to the in-well. And then the Atwell was put on as a separate piece. I like doing it all at once, so you use half the screws. We don't actually use any screws on the in-well. The screws from the Atwell go through and hold everything. So it's just a sandwich construction. Um, part of that's with the epoxies and things we're using now. It's um, just much stronger. It's also a lot quicker. And I find that if you just screw the hull to it, it creates a pinch point. So the hull isn't actually straight. It's waving around the screws. Alright, so as we fit this and test it, you just put your stick, your support stick across, and you look at the angle that we've created. I don't have this quite up, but you can see I have a very slight angle. It's pretty flush. Getting close. And you want to get it just close. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. Actually, we think that perfection's for the gods. So you probably don't ever want it perfect. Okay, one of the issues we have in this pristine virgin boat is that after sitting in the garage for 45 years, when we took all the parts out, they literally popped out. There's no glue held anymore. And then the boat seemed to shrink and change shape a little bit. Now they do change shape once all the pieces come out anyway. They become a noodle. They're very floppy. This is a very rigid hull. But what's happened is, whereas the rails would normally fit, you can see how the rail is, does not fit the hull the way it is now. And what we discovered in using this existing out rail, when we put it on flush and max the screw hole at the, at the uh, aft end, and we uh, attach it all the way going up forward, when we did the poor rail, the plan was, oh, we can reuse all the old holes. Well, it turns out the out rail is a half an inch too long. We really don't know why that is. Uh, our best guess is that from sitting around uh, completely in a garage and not exposed to humidity and weather, this boat, the whole hull is just shrunk. And when we took it apart, it just it kind of sucked up. And the same thing is true on this out rail. We make it flush here, we fit it around here, and it's a half inch too long. So part of what is going on is that when we put these rails on, it's pushing the boat back into shape. So you can see that as we've only fit three feet back here, this isn't fitting. But when you pull this into the shape that it's going to be, which is easy to do, you can see how it now changes the shape of the hull. Now, because we're trying to make the rails straight, um, horizontally across the boat. And we're using our little sticks to support the rails and to, as our guidelines on that angle that we're trying to achieve to get it flat. You can see that right now we have this fit and it's still, the rail is slightly down. And it's open here and tight here. When I go here though, and the reason that we're not too concerned about making this perfect as far as fitting, when we pull this rail, we twist the boat, and it becomes closer to flat. This is loose. This is tight. So as we fit the whole thing, it'll change. And if it doesn't fit exactly, we'll go back and just fine-tune it a bit. That's the reason also that the we haven't attached it through the transom to pull it out is because this angle, the angle of the uh, hull as it intersects the transom will change as we're attached all the way along. And we'll uh, actually fine tune that once we get it fit completely. That'll be our final dimension and we'll lock it in. We don't want to lock it in now because then it'll put extra strain on it and it'll just pop the joint. Okay, back to fitting. So we're actually pretty good on this. And what I do is I just uh, I start marking stuff. So for now, we're okay. Up to there. 
just draw a pencil on there. I'm tight on the bottom. It's slightly angled. It flattens up. Might even be pretty good up here. Have to test it. One of the problems you may run into is that because of the angle of the hull, and especially when you go to glue it, is that when you clamp it, it'll tend to drift on that angle because it's more slippery. All right, so we just to test it. It is down a hair. Again, that's probably going to be okay. on the bottom. So this is uh this is good up to here. Okay up here too. You can hold this and I haven't planned this at all. I have a huge gap here. Right about where I said okay. It's fit from here back and I have to start fitting this. I have to unclamp it all. Clamp at the very aft end, so that makes it a little bit easier. Grab the plane. As we're moving forward, this angle is going to change slowly, very slowly, it starts to flatten out. And because this is dirty wood, I don't need to mark it to see what I'm planning. doing this time is, because we're close on the fit, 
I'm now clamping every two screws. I have two screws between each clamp. This is how I'll actually clamp it up when I go to screw it together. And when we do the final assembly, this will be similar to what we're doing. This is looking pretty good. Good. Down here. But that should come up. Yeah, it comes up one way. Just like this. Lost the stick. This is where you need a lot of clamps. Cannot have too many. If you don't have enough clamps, you'll run into problems because. If you're not clamping pretty continuously, you'll have gaps, and then you don't, it doesn't, uh, you may not line up in the end. And the problem is you're fitting the, the allen gets fit at the inside dimension, so it's tricky to fit. So you actually have to clamp consistently, tightly, all the way from the turn forward to see where it's actually going to end up. Because if you have too few clamps and you have little gaps going along, when you go to do the final assembly and you screw it from the stern going forward, what you'll find it will change the length dimension. The gaps go away and then it's changed. That's bad. This is like perfect. Perfect is good enough. This is down a little bit here. Now this is tight, which means our angle is slightly off. Now if it's a very localized condition, we might leave that. But no, nope, see it gets much worse here. So we have to uh, adjust this. And you can see here where it starts dropping considerably. Here's where the shift occurs. Here, see our shroud locations here, you can see by the old holes. You can see this is pretty flat here, although we're not completely clamped. But this is where the hull is vertical, so this is going to fit automatically. And as you can see here, this is substantially low. So we have to mark that. And what I will do. What I, what I do is, um, if this gap, you just mark it in some reference that you understand that you can go by. So here, I have an eighth of an inch gap in here. So I'll put uh, an eighth of an inch, and I write top, which means take it off the top edge, which will allow it to angle up. Now, I'm not cutting an eighth of an inch off, because this is three times the dimension out here. So it would be... Technically, it's just, um, the amount of material I would remove from this to get that angle would be a third of an eighth. To me, this is just a reference that that's my eighth inch gap on the horizontal. I need to trim the top of this. So I just go through here. This is the same. Eighth inch, trim the top. When you unclamp it and you put the board out, what's going to happen is you'll forget 
Wait a minute. Which edge am I trimming? Just give yourself a reference. What do you want to trim? Okay, this is an eighth minus. Again, it's the top I have to cut. Uh, that's about a sixteenth. Uh, that's the top. And here is where we were okay, and we are okay still. So, from okay, from stern forward, this is looking quite good. So, what we just set up and did is still, this has to get trimmed on the top edge a little bit more. Here. Alright, yeah, we'll mark here, 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 and here. And that's a taper. 16th, thin 8th, 8th, 8th. says okay. Here we're three and a quarter plus just a hair. Plus just a hair. We're going to end up belt sanding this varnish off this that well, so that's okay. Here we're three and uh, shy five sixteenths. This is the last point of okay, which means ideally we'd plane this a tiny bit. So this is uh, for width. I'm going to put W where uh, plus a 32nd here. So that we can afford to plane this off. Again, we don't want to adjust that trimming the oak. We want to keep the oak full size. We'd rather trim it out of the, uh, the interior. So we'll get a couple checkpoints here. This is three and a quarter plus, which is also a, uh, that's a 32nd wide. But this, remember, we're going to be trimming this to fit better. So we're probably okay on this, so I'm not going to trim that yet. So that's the other measurement we're concerned with. We need to check that. Okay, we've unclamped, we left the clamp here, jam this back here to support this above the hull. Now we just refer to our notes. We're okay on our angle up to this point. However, the width is plus a 32nd. So, from here, we just want to keep the plane dead flat on here, don't change the bevel, and just take off a slight amount of material. As we get up to here, we want to take it off the top. So you really want to twist it a little. Take a little off the top here. here we're just reducing on width. Now, if you want, again, you can put your reference marks here to see what you're planning. I can kind of see with the light. I can see my bevel. I can feel it. But, uh, does it ever trick you? Yeah. You were up at the eighth of an inch off the top. What I'm doing is planing a little bit off the top edge itself. And you can see it's from the top edge down here. And then I'm pretty much going to connect these two and make it flat. And as we move forward. And we still have bevel here. I'm guessing at the shroud it's about plumb. So we're going to taper this out and twist it until we're just about dead flat right there. Check. We have a flat. We're a little rounded right there. where that's rounded. You can see it rock. That usually happens where you're making a transition from being more more of an angle and as you slowly twist it 
that's usually where you'll catch a bit of a round. Okay, on the plan, we'll just, we'll just clamp it back up. See how we stand. up to test it, test our fitting up to the shroud, but what I want to show right here is how as the rail is pulled in to fit, it's really wide right here, and tight, and see how it changes the shape when you pull it out, and watch the twist in the back, how it lifts and twists the transom, it's interesting. pieces that are in the boat, the gratings especially with the 45s and things, um, lend a huge amount of rigidity and strength to the boat in a very light way. Again, when you clamp this, don't be too tight. Just make it firm, just holding it. Otherwise, the clamps. The clamps are very powerful and will compress and dig into the wood. You don't really want that. Alright, that's this is the shroud location. So that's about as far as we could before. Let's see what we got. Alright. This is now angled up. That's the first we haven't had that before. And let's move back, take a look. This is up just slightly. And that's flat. That's good. Now, let's go back to where we were okay. Okay is still flat. Our width was a little bit fat. Now we're three and a quarter exactly. Perfect. So, find our pencil. And we erase what we wanted to change. So we're good up to here. This is three and a quarter maybe plus a hair and that's very flat as well so when we're no longer wide and the angle is good we're now okay up to here keep moving forward we're very flat we're at three and a quarter we're okay so we're fitting nicely here all right this stick is bowed okay bad stick of course, if you have a bent stick, it's not going to help. That's pretty flat. And our width is three and a quarter. This is three and a quarter plus. All right, so we're okay on angle and width all the way up to here. We'll erase our other marks. So we're good all the way up to there. Okay. Almost halfway fit. Here the angle is pretty good. Here the angle is good. Here the angle is going up. You see it going up here where it's tight here, and now you have a gap on this side. We are at 3 and 5 sixteenths plus. So a good bit. Now, we're approaching 
the area of where the hull is straight. And that here, this is 3 32nd, uh, I'm sorry, 3 and 3 eighths plus a little bit. So there's a whole fat eighth of an inch that has to get removed from this, even though up in this location it should be approaching flat. Doesn't seem to be. Right now this is angled up. But it's not up much. It's only that eight. So there's a good bit of material that's got to get removed from that. Alright, so we're okay to this point. Here we're flat. And it's fat by a sixteenth. Alright, so uh, angle's good. Uh, so this is just the width. It's plus a sixteenth. Here. Everything else is pretty good. Oh, this is a uh, good on angle, and this is wide by just a thirty second. Wide plus a thirty second. All right, now this is angled up. To get it to drop down, we have to cut away the bottom of this. So here we've got a sixteenth gap here. So it used to be eighth up to the top. Now we have one sixteenth bottom. That's the side we want to cut away. And here the width is quite wide. It's three and five sixteenths. So we are the width is plus it's three thirty seconds actually. Three uh, we'll go one sixteenth plus. Same as three thirty seconds. Here we have an eighth of an inch gap. So we have an eighth of an inch. We want to cut the bottom. Again, you can write this any way you want. This is just my notes. So we're at three and three eighths. So this is, an, uh, the width is an eighth plus. So we've got to take a bunch away. Okay, we unclamp, do it again. But now we're only fitting, we are fit to here. So now we're just starting to trim this. And then we progress to the